Okay, so we're going to begin the process of deriving Young's inequality, and the reason is that in order to, uh, in order to derive uh, Minkowski's inequality, we have to first derive the Holder's inequality, and in order to derive Holder's inequality, we have to first derive Young's inequality. Okay, so Young's inequality, firstly just to state it before we begin the proof, Young's inequality says that if alpha and beta are positive real numbers, and uh, p is another real number greater than 1, uh, and uh, q is the conjugate exponent, is the conjugate exponent of p, and I will explain to you exactly what that means, conjugate exponent of p, uh, then alpha times beta is less than or equal to alpha to the power of p divided by p plus beta to the power of q divided by q. Uh, so that is going to be uh, Young's inequality there. Okay, uh, so this is Young's inequality. Okay, right, so firstly let's explain what uh, the concept of conjugate exponent means. Uh, so uh, if I say that q is the conjugate exponent of p, what does that mean? Conjugate exponent. Uh, so it means, uh, this is exactly what it means, it means that 1 divided by p plus 1 divided by q is equal to 1. And firstly, that uh, this will have a solution. There will be a solution q. Uh, there will be some real number q which satisfies this, providing p is greater than 1. Because if p is greater than 1, then 1 divided by p is less than 1. Uh, so 1 minus 1 over p is going to be, uh, is going to be some, uh, well, it's going to be some positive number. So there will be a Q uh, which is positive uh, that satisfies this. Uh, so I should have said that Q is a positive number as well, greater than zero. Uh, uh, and it's probably it's going to be greater than one specifically as well, greater than one. So Q is also going to be greater than one. Uh, so um, that's what it means for them to be conjugate exponents of each other. Uh, so if we, um, if we want to get a direct formula for Q in terms of P, uh, the way we could do that is we could say that 1 over Q is equal to 1 minus 1 over P, uh, which is, uh, if we um, get this over a common denominator, this is P minus 1 over P. Now we can just flip both sides and we get that Q is equal to P over P minus 1. Uh, so that's the actual explicit formula that if you know some q, you can derive. Uh, sorry, if you know some p, uh, you can derive a q. So uh, if p is equal to two, we can stick two into here, and we'll get two over um, two minus one, which is one. Uh, so we get that q is also going to be equal to two. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's uh, so. Um, 2 is the conjugate exponent of 2 in that case. Uh, so let's get another more useful formula uh, that we can derive from uh, the fact that p and q uh, obey this relationship. So if we multiply the p minus 1 up, so we get q times p minus 1 is equal to p, and multiply that out, we get qp minus q, and then bring the p onto the other side, minus p is equal to 0. Well, uh, we can notice that we can factorise this as q minus 1 p minus 1, and the reason is that if you expand this, uh, this is going to be equal to q uh, p minus, uh, minus uh, well, qp minus q, then we get minus p, and then we get plus 1. So this isn't quite equal to this, but if we just subtract 1 from it, uh, then uh, it will indeed be equal to that. So qp minus q minus p is going to be equal to this. So that implies that if this is equal to this, then it's also equal to 0. So q minus 1 uh, times p minus 1 is therefore equal to 0 plus 1, which is 1. And that's quite a useful formula there, uh, once we know that q and p are conjugate exponents. OK, so now we've got that statement. That's, uh, so we now that we know uh, what the full statement of Young's uh, inequality is, given uh, that we now know what conjugate exponents mean, uh, we are in a position to start the proof of this. Uh, inequality, so proof. Okay, so the way that you go about proving this is to uh, look at the f look at a function, uh, look at a very special function. So we're going to look at the function y is equal to x to the power of p minus one. Okay, so if we plot that function, well, p is greater than one. So this this number is going to be still a uh, non-negative real number. And in fact, it's going to be a positive real number because it cannot equal zero because p is actually strictly greater than one. Uh, so uh, for all uh, for all uh, non-negative um, 
not well. For all positive, uh, re positive real numbers that you put here, the graph of x to the power of that um, positive number looks something along the lines of this. So think along the lines of x squared uh, is your canonical example of a function like this. Now we don't care what happens in the uh, negative case. Negatives can be far more complicated because for instance uh, if if the exponent is uh, to the power of a half, uh, then we're going to run into problems when we want to do minus one to the power of a half and things like that. And we don't want to we don't want to come across those problems at the moment. Uh, so uh, we're just going to let um, x be a positive real number. So I'll stick that in. X is an element of zero uh, to infinity. And uh, because p is greater than 1, we know that this exponent is uh, greater than 0 also. OK, uh, so now what we can do is we can consider alpha and beta. So alpha and beta are also positive numbers. So if we just consider them like this, if we just have, if we, alpha is some number. Alpha is some real number. So plot it on its position on this real line. So I put alpha down here. And of course, there is some y of alpha over here. So if I stick alpha into this formula, it has some value over here. Now, beta is either greater than or equal to y alpha, or it's less than or equal to y alpha. So firstly, let's, let's take the case that beta is less than y of alpha. Or it could, of course, be equal to it. Uh, we'll, we'll say that it's... Uh, in fact, we'll say that it's less than or equal. So, in fact, no, we'll, we'll treat the equal case separately. So, let's say firstly that beta is less than y of alpha. Then, I can plot beta somewhere here. And then what I can draw is a rectangle like so, uh, which is the rectangle uh, between which has side length beta up here. And the other length is alpha down here. And basically, what you will notice about this rectangle is that if I add up two areas, if I add up the area uh, bound between the curve and the y-axis and this line y is equal to beta, if I work out this area here, that area uh, is completely contained within the rectangle alpha beta. If I then work out the area, if I work out the area um, between, uh, bounded between the x-axis down here, the curve and the line uh, x is equal to alpha, that is equal to this area here. So as you can see, this area completely, completely, well, completely covers, uh, these two areas added together completely cover the rectangle alpha beta. And in fact, the area of this rectangle alpha beta, which is alpha beta, that's the area of the rectangle alpha beta, is less than uh, this area here, the area, um, area between, uh, let's say, uh, curve, uh, which I'll just denote C, um, uh, let's say Y axis, which I'll just denote Y, and uh, the line uh, Y is equal to beta. So that area there, this blue area, uh, plus uh, the area between the curve, which again I'll just denote C, uh, the X axis, which I'll denote X, and the line x is equal to alpha. So if we add those two together, it's less than, well, it's greater than, rather, it's greater than the area alpha beta between the rectangle. So this is the foundations for Young's inequality. Now what we want to do is generalize it, because beta might not be less than y alpha. So uh, basically, what we're going to do, what we if we work out these areas between the curves by integration, uh, what we're going to basically get is Young's inequality. Uh, but we need to prove... Uh, prove it for the case that beta is equal to y alpha and beta is greater than y alpha also. So let's look at those cases now. Okay, so I need another piece of paper. So that's a good picture, so I want to keep it. Okay, uh, keep it in view as best as possible anyway. Okay, so let's, let's bring this over here a bit like that. So that's better. Oh, um, we've lost the picture now though. Um, Oh, never mind. I'll get the picture back when I need it. Okay, uh, I can draw another one anyway. So um, let's draw the picture again. Here we go. Uh, so alpha, remember, was fixed. So alpha is here. Now we're going to say uh, that beta is, in fact, equal to y of alpha. So this is actually equal to beta. So uh, beta is equal to y of alpha. So this is another case. OK, uh, so in this case, uh, what's going to happen is that this is the blue area this time. This is the blue area here. And uh, that's the area between the curve 
the y-axis and the line y is equal to beta and the area the pink area this time is here which is the area between the curve the line x is equal to alpha and the x-axis and in this case the area of the rectangle alpha beta is exactly equal to uh, the area uh, between, I will now just write uh, B for, oh no, I'll write it properly, between uh, the curve, the y-axis, and the line y is equal to beta, plus the area uh, between uh, the curve, the x-axis, and the line x is equal to alpha. So this is the is responsible for the uh, less than or equal to in Young's inequality. So if it happens that beta is equal to y of alpha, that's going to that's going to be the reason that the case that there is the is the possibility that these two that the two sides of this inequality are equal basically, and it's going to come about because this case does exist. Okay, so the final case is that beta is greater than y of alpha. So if we draw that picture, we have our curve, which is uh, the function y is equal to x to the p minus 1. Uh, we have some alpha down here, which remember we said was fixed. Uh, this is y alpha here. And now we're saying, what if beta is actually greater than y of alpha? Then if we draw the rectangle uh, between alpha and beta, we get something that looks like this. OK, uh, now uh, if we extend beta up to the curve here, then the blue area, which is the area between the uh, y-axis, the curve, and the line y is equal to beta, is here. It's this bit. Okay? And the uh, area between the uh, curve, the x-axis, and the line x is equal to alpha is this bit here. And you will notice in this case, again, the area uh, of the rectangle, which is alpha beta, is now again less than uh, the area uh, between uh, the curve, the y-axis, and y is equal to beta, plus the area uh, between the curve, the curve, the x-axis, and uh, the line x is equal to alpha. But this time, uh, the bit that causes the... Um, uh, this to be greater than this is uh, due to uh, the blue area, whereas in the original case it was due to the pink area. Uh, so in the case that beta is greater than y of alpha, the reason that these two are not equal uh, and this one is in fact greater is because uh, the area between the curve, uh, the y-axis and y is equal to beta escapes, goes beyond the rectangle alpha beta. Okay, so basically what we can now say is that for all alpha beta are positive real numbers, the um, area of this rectangle, which is alpha beta, is less than or possibly equal to the area uh, between uh, the curve, uh, the y-axis, and the line y is equal to beta, and plus the area between the curve, curve, the x-axis, and the line x is equal to alpha. Uh, so this inequality always holds, no matter what alpha and beta, uh, beta you have, because I've shown you in e for every possible case uh, of a uh, case of positive real numbers, this holds. Basically, I said, let alpha be any positive real number. We fix alpha. Now there are three possibilities. Beta is either less than y of alpha, or it's equal to y of alpha, or it's greater than y of alpha. In all of those three cases, this to hold this inequality holds. So now all we have to do is it's time for a bit of calculus. It's time to work out the area between uh, the curve, the y-axis, and the line y is equal to beta. And it's time to work out the area between the curve, the x-axis, and x is equal to alpha. So the first one, this bit is easier to do because we don't have to invert the function. So the function was y is equal to x to the p minus 1. So this area over here, the area between the, uh, between the curve, the x-axis, and the line x is equal to alpha. This is just equal to the integral of x to the p minus 1 uh, between uh, 0 and alpha uh, dx. Now, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is uh, x to the p over p, which is the antiderivative of this, uh, evaluated between 0 and alpha. 
which is just equal to alpha to the p over p, and then it would be minus 0 to the p over p, which is just 0. Uh, so there we get that this area here is in fact equal to alpha to the p over p. So this is looking very good. Uh, and now uh, we get this area between the curve, the y-axis, and y is equal to beta. Now to calculate that, we have to invert the function. Uh, so we have that y is equal to x to the p minus 1. What we want is we want x as a function of y, so x is equal to y over, uh, well, over 1 divided by p minus 1. Uh, but if you remember back to our, um, our experimentation with conjugate uh, exponents, 1 divided by p minus 1, if you just bring this p minus 1 over here, is in fact equal to q minus 1. Uh, so we get, therefore, that this is equal to y to the power of q minus 1. And you should be shivering by now, uh, because uh, this area here between the curve of y-axis and y is equal to beta is the integral between 0 and beta of y to the q minus 1 at dy. Okay, uh, so by the se second fundamental theorem of calculus, this is y to the q over q evaluated between 0 and beta, which is equal to, because since this is the antiderivative of this, uh, which is equal to beta to the q over q minus 0 to the power of q over q, which is just 0. So this is the area between the curve, the y-axis, and y is equal to beta. So this is beta over q to the power of q. So therefore we get that alpha beta is less than or equal to, just swapping this one and this one around, alpha to the p over p plus beta to the q over q, which is Young's inequality. So this is Young's inequality. And this holds true for any real number, positive real numbers, alpha and beta, and any p which is greater than 1. So this is Young's inequality. And I'll just put those conditions. Alpha, uh, beta, greater than 0. P, greater than 1. 1 over P, plus 1 over Q, equal to 1. Uh, so that is Young's inequality, and we will use this in the proof of Holder's inequality, which is at the next video.